Welcome to EE392 Digital Signal Processing. This project is based on faulty gear analysis. The group members are Anish Chan, Kushal Prasad, Muhammad Ashab, Rishadev, and Shamal Chandra. To start off this project, we will discuss a bit about it. So, in the era of digital world, it is more easier and reliable to predict the performance of gear systems without disassembling the entire, entire systems. It is possible to predict the fault and fault conditions in any case of the rotary machine mostly targeting in induction motor by using vibration analysis with the help of fast Fourier transform analyzer and its accessories and tools. So this project is basically we were given a data set that contained healthy data of our induction motor and two faulty data that was labeled as faulty 1 and faulty 2. This will be shown later in the video. <coughs> for the methods this method was applied to get our results as you can see the first step was data extraction from here we got our healthy data our faulty data 1 and faulty data 2 we then decided to use a filter to smooth out the rough edges to give a much better graph this will be shown later in the results section after we obtained that, we got a compare. We were able to compare the healthy data with the smooth healthy data. The smooth healthy data was then subtracted with the smooth faulty data, and then smooth healthy data was subtracted with smooth healthy data of the second one. Eh, excuse me. Smooth healthy data was subtracted with smooth faulty data too. This was from this we were able to identify the fault. Now moving on to our results. The first step was loading and extracting the data. So as you can see in our workspace, we have already done that. We were able to get all the data from the folder using the code provided here. Our, our sampling frequency was selected to be 5000. And in our data set, if you have a look now, the fault to me okay we'll start with the healthy data the healthy data contains eight features by 30 300,000 samples the first one contained the time sample the data from 2 to 4 was the voltage 5 to 7 was the current and the eighth one contained the load that, that became our couple data this is the same we can this will be the same for faulty data one that also contain 300,000 samples with eight features <coughs> and faulty data two as well this contained eight features and 300,000 samples so when we when we run this first code this will extract the data we need and then we move on to our healthy data analysis. When we run this code, we get a smooth, we get the original healthy data signal. And then from here, this is where the smoother data is applied. The smooth function is applied. This is our smooth healthy signal. And then when we take a difference of them, the, we can see that there is no error in it. Now when we go for fault analysis 1, this is the original signal for the healthy data, I mean the, give me a second, this is the data for the faulty, original faulty data for the first one. This data is then smoothed out to give our smoothed healthy, smoothed faulty data.
as you can see when we compare with our faulty data the smooth the smoother smoother faulty data contains less harmonics when compared to the original da faulty data as you can see here and here in the third one in the difference we can we are able to see where the faults are occurring in the 300,000 sample we can see that from 0 0.5 till 2 times 10 to the power 5 we can notice that the fault is occurring between these points now moving on to faulty 2 analysis The first graph is the the original faulty data two. The second graph is the smooth faulty data two. This is achieved after applying filters. In the third graph, you can see that you can see there are multiple faults that are detected. This is this graph is uh, this graph is shown by uh, taking the difference between the healthy smooth data and the faulty faulty smooth data for the second fault. <coughs> As you can see, there are more faults detected using more faults in the second faulty data. Now moving on to our current analysis, we have used envelope detection method using the low pass filter method. We are able to see the spikes that occur throughout the sample. then doing data analysis <coughs> in this before I move further in this we are taking the faulty data for the first and the second and also we are taking the healthy data in this we are comparing the three graphs so if you look at the first figure you can see that it has less distortion when compared to the other two This is the figure for the faulty data one. The first figure was for faulty data. Uh, it was for the healthy data. Figure three is the faulty data two. Now moving on to the filter design. <coughs> Here we are using a this is a filtered signal using stop band. As you can see that after filtering there is less distortion in the signal. This is the magnitude response. If we have a closer look, we are able to see the spikes that range from 0 to the highest spike going up till 
nearly 15 times 10 to the power 4 and our DFT beans ranges from 0 to 3 the entire 30 300,000 sample okay this is our signal flow diagram here you can see the delays and the you can see the delays and this is our butt filter this is the 20th order butt uh, filter signal We have used 20th order and we have also used 2nd order but what filter. Now moving on to the PSD test. Here we have done another method which will uh, which will show later uh, the Hennings method as window. We will plot the R graph. This R graph is from fault analysis to this R here. We are plotting it in here to determine the faults as well. This is the frequency. Uh, graph versus its amplitude and this is the fault occurring in the 300,000 sample ranging from negative 2 to 2 when we plot the fault graph for the first one we use G because this shows the difference between the healthy signal and the faulty signal the for the first one when you run this you get a graph for uh, frequency versus amplitude and <coughs> our fault this is the first fault from the data from uh, faulty data one as you can see when we used as we showed in the first graph using the the filtered method this is used this is using Henning's method now lastly this is, is this is our power spectrum graph for healthy data faulty data 1 and faulty data 2 this is shown in the codes here using FFT we have taken the load data the gold the orange or goldish graph represents the healthy data <coughs> data one is our the blue line is our data one the red is our data two and the third data is three the first data is our fault 1, the second data is fault 2, and the third data is our healthy data. Here we can determine that the ones that has the faults are <coughs> having a higher fluctuation when compared to the original data. In this we can say that 
in this we can say that the fault <coughs> if there is a fault in the system the system tends to take more power when compared to the healthy data or when compared to the healthy system these graphs are our double-sided magnitude spectrum for each of the faults this is the single-sided magnitude spectrum and this is the single-sided power spectrum so to conclude our project as you can see from our poster we have used our results according to our codes and we have also done a discussion about how this project is vital for industries to appreciate <coughs> these days because <coughs> fault detection in uh, for fault detection for gear is uh, crucial so to conclude in this project once more it is important to emphasize on the benefits of using fast Fourier transformation this is because without dissembling the entire entire gear systems or the entire induction motor to detect your faults it was possible to identify and detect the faults in the gear by taking various sample sizes and comparing the voltage and current difference against time we were able to identify the faults and also visualize the fault occurring in the faulty data set by comparing the results with the healthy data set as we have shown throughout the presentation we have also visualized it in power spectrum that we saw that the faulty induction motor had a higher consumption of power when compared to the healthy data set all in all it was a great experience to conduct and perform this project enabling us as future engineers to implement various methods and techniques which gets the work done faster and in a more efficient way as well thank you for listening to our presentation and goodbye